All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to this beautiful Sunday, March 31st. And uh, I'm here to do this uh, a foundation a conference call for uh, Garvey Town for those who uh, have uh, purchased plots and those who are looking to um, uh, finalize uh, their decision uh, based on information that they have seen before. So I want to go to a, a quick uh, introduction and a connection with what we're doing as far as Africa for the Africans towards an investment and uh, that connection on uh, Garvey Town and how we got here. Right. So I started traveling uh, to uh, Ghana in December of uh, 2006, and that's uh, two months before we started our business, Africa for the Africans towards an investment. Now, uh, in the connection with Garvey Town, the goal was always to uh, find a good-sized land where those of us um, that are more into the pan-African mindset uh, and looking to, you know, really just uh, connect to the African continent, you know, in a communal energy, uh, looking to just, you know, use our cooperative economics as best as possible. Uh, so the original project that I heard about at first was a project called Fiancre in the Eastern Region, and it was a few hundred uh, acres uh, available uh, for those of us in African diaspora. So I checked it out in December 2006, you know, right after uh, I finished my initial tour there in Ghana. Then the following year, everything was set for a um, second tour, uh, Ghana, October uh, 2007, and I uh, was able to uh, build a connection um, with the said, uh, Fiancre uh, to the point where um, you know, we, have, we had a scheduled tour. We just go there and visit the land and get a presentation. So we was, I was able to do um, you know, three good sequence of presentation, October uh, 2007, 2008, and 2009. You know, all throughout the, the energy of this uh, presenting information, it was you know, it seemed like a good uh, energy, and the most we were doing was just you know bringing people there, and trying to get you know used to the understanding of just how to just make it all work as far as living and doing business there in Ghana. So during the whole time, you know, we're bringing people there. You know, people have shared that uh, you know, you know, it's not really for them, and you know, you you start beginning to hear more and more negative feedback. Uh, and nevertheless, the first set of people who initially wanted to go end up finding land somewhere else. So, you know, you hear complaints from mismanagement and unorganization, and that's, you know, the two biggest ones. Forward to the future, um, the last time I was able to go to Fianca was October of uh, 2014, and that's when around the same time two, two of our elders um, were, were murdered uh, outside of the property. And it's still beginning to be one of those mysterious things, uh, but at the same time, too, if we're going to move as a community, you know, no one can tell me, you know, if, you know what happened to, you know, two elders you know, on our watch or in the vicinity, you know. So, you know, already you know that that's an issue because that's a serious security issue. None of us, our lives should be at stake or something should happen to any of us, and then no one knows anything or no one has our back, you know. So. That whole process and that whole time from 2006 to 2014, for me, it was just you know literally a learning process. You know, unfortunately, you just learn a lot from things like this, but sometimes that's the best way to learn from it. Just like all other things that you know, moving around Ghana for the last uh, 12 years on 15 journeys. Another opportunity presented itself. Um, was able to visit our sister um, Nunet and Benu village up there in Techiman, uh, which I went up there three times, but not much people showed interest. A um, few people did move up there, but at the end of the day, I couldn't really find a good amount of land to where, you know, we could just really offer it to a good amount of people. So forward to um, May of last year, um, you know, we went down to Senior Barracool at the end of the journey and, um, you know, Begin to this. I uh, begin to this. Look back at the central region, um, based on the first time I started going to Ghana in 2006. Uh, so I started, you know, connect with my brothers, moving forward investment group, and uh, they were looking to do something in that era also. And he also um, connected me to what we end up finding out today as a uh, Garvey Town. Um, uh, the area is, you know, it's a district called Gomoa. During that time frame from between May and November of our last year, um, begin to just put all the things together to where I was able to get my business partner, David, to, you know, to meet with a brother after my other business partner met with him and wasn't really interested in partnering up. 
so our good brother David, which does all of our business and investment conference uh, since uh, 07, and he's the one that literally just um, connected me to, to Fiancra. Uh, I told him that you know we're looking to this, you know, get something organized, and I heard about this Garvey Town, and it seemed to be a, a good project, but no one, no one ever ever hear anything about it because you know it is nowadays. It's a simple thing. If you don't put it online, people don't know about you know what's going on. Yeah. So over the period of time from uh, October to November last year, I was able to get all of the documentation. And even after I came back from the journey, I got more documentation. And I basically just just went through all of the documentation and just put it together and put it on the website, uh, our website, Africa for the African dot org, which is where all of the Garvey Town information is. So when you look to the left side of the, the page to the main menu, uh, the first uh, link on the main menu is going to say uh, Garvey Town Community. And all you have to do is just uh, click on it. And what I'm doing is going over all of the, the information in Garvey Town. That way, everyone that's having any interest literally can just look to all of the information before they just start asking a whole lot of questions. And I'm just going to go through this, and then we're going to open things up, and I'm going to give everybody all of the updates where we're with uh, Garvey Town. Uh, so also in November, we did the repatriation and investment conference. So we were able to record Garvedina Gamba, which is a project developer or project manager of Garvey Town. Uh, and we were able to record a video with him driving on the outside of um, the Garvey Town land and also he was able to do you know, a general presentation uh, in the, the, the courtyard not too far from his house and the school in Garvey Town. So those are just a base of documentation that you know, you're building little by little. That way people have information that they can process. And at the same time, too, this project uh, is at its beginning. Uh, so in 2004, uh, which you'll see on a legal document, is when they started putting this together as far as doing the legal paperwork to get access to the land. And I know it's uh, 15 years later. Uh, not much has been done, but I'm going to fill you in with all of the things, you know, of what happened in the, you know, those 15 years, which uh, it's a combination of us um, not, you know, giving certain commitment, but at the same time, too, it's hard for people to commit to projects where it's not being presented showcase and information is being shared. All right, so while you're on the website, uh, AfricaForAfricans.org, and you click on the Garvey Town link, the first uh, link you're going to see is Overview of Garvey Town. And now the first and the second link is where you'll find both site maps. Uh, and the site maps, the latest one is the one that's uh, labeled. And so um, beyond just the, uh, the overview, which I'm not going to read, too much into all of this is just basically talking about Garvey Town uh, is a 300 acre proposed community in Gamoa, Ezekwa, uh, and that's in the central region. So if you're leaving Accra, it's about an hour and a half, two hours in the direction of Cape Coast, and if you're leaving from Cape Coast, Elmina is the same. Uh, so you're looking at it's looking looking at about you know right there in the middle of Cape Coast and Accra, and then also um, Garvey Town is about two miles from the main road and about seven miles uh, from the uh, coast. Uh, so roughly about a 15 minute drive to some of the closest beaches, Winnabout, Bojo Beach, uh, Coco Beach, uh, or 15 to 20 minutes. And also um, on, the, uh, on the overview, it gives you a link and a GPS um, coordinates and a GPS link. Uh, for those who are looking to show up at the property, make sure that you have all this information down and just have access to it before you get there. But you can literally, you know, navigate and look at it and just get a general idea of the location of the community. And uh, it's an exact coordinates because we use, you know, we took photos at the location uh, with our phones and then we just used the coordinates on the phone. So that's how we came up with that. But uh, overall, it's just uh, giving you... Just a you know, quick overview, saying that Garvey Town is a, you know, is a community that offers as many different flexible options uh, for those of us who are looking to repatriate, build business, live in, you know, and connect uh, during our Ghana. Uh, so 
it's um, this basic um, information. But let me and what you're going to see uh, each of the links uh, is you know, try not to fill too much information on each of them. And so the next one is the uh, site map and location. And so this one offers the same site map and you know, the same as far as direction and location. So I'll just make sure I have it on both of those. Now when you scroll down this side, uh, give you an email request and if you just want to have access to the site map, I can email it to you. And now uh, further down now uh, you see different variation of the numbering of the site map. And it's just to give you just a, cl a clear view of the flow of the sequence of how the community is labeled. So you'll see 300 plots. Um, at the very beginning, you'll see a public and a utility area. And that area is uh, for you know, your power station and just all of the utilities is where it's organized in the beginning of the community. Uh, further over is a civic and culture area. Now, civic and culture represent a general culture center where you have you know, space for you know, big uh, meetings. Now, also, uh, you know, when you build the fire department, medical center, uh, and things of that nature, uh, security posts, all of that is right there. Then across from it is a commercial district. So as far as factories, restaurants, uh, stores, shops, all of that is in a mix of that. And the plot layout is not laid out just like the community itself. So we're working on just giving clarity of how we can all put our resources together and build more of like a strip area or you know, make plots uh, a reasonable size to where you know, people can put uh, the resources together and combine the building. Uh, so there's many different discussions of that area that we're going to have to uh, get into. And a lot of things um, that we probably want to get into, we're probably going to have to get into further later as most of this calls about the introduction and how we're going to start building. Now, the, on the site map, you'll see uh, three different layout of um, agriculture and farmland. And that is for us to do as much farming as far as fruits and vegetables as possible. Anything dealing with livestock or animals and things of like that can be put to the very back part of the, uh, the property. So the layout of the property is set to where everything is just a nice uh, flow or balance. At, uh, in, in the middle of the site map is a recreation and educational area. So for those who you know have that dream and that goal of wanting to build a school or be a part of school building or recreation building, you know those of us in the community have a chance to put our minds together and you know make it work. Because once again, um, this is 300 acres of undeveloped land, uh, with the exception of uh, a few small houses and a few small buildings on the property. Uh, so. We're here it is in it with our connection of energy, which we connected with in November of last year, to you know, to take this to the next level. That's perfect. So, so first uh, two links I give you all of those uh, physical location details, so everybody can, can just clear and know exactly where the property and community is and how to access the uh, directions and location. All right, uh, number uh, three, uh, Memorandum of Understanding for Garvey Town Community. And then number four, Land Agreement for Garvey Town. Uh, so these are the legal documents. Um, so for those who may have any questions or that, or for those who haven't read it, just you know, read through it. And if you're not clear on certain things, you can just uh, jot some questions down. But that just uh, basically just shows the connection between the Garvey Town Company and the family that uh, the land actually uh, belongs to and it shows the amount that uh, is paid on the land uh, yearly which is $5,500 and once we're there settled in the community if we break that up by two to three hundred residents you're looking at about twenty dollars per person per year and uh, same situation as you know when it comes to uh, land tax once the community is developed tax people come around and you're looking at about thirty to fifty dollars you know, per year for taxes so annual um, 
fee for the land is about that price uh, twenty thirty uh, dollars and annual tax is about thirty or fifty and as far as utility and things like that uh, those are things that um, you know that uh, work out um, and I can just get into that right now since we talk about the uh, public and uh, civic uh, area um, public utilities as far as uh, internet uh, during Ghana um, everything operates uh, basically off tower so that's your phone and your internet connectivity uh, so example you use a company like uh, MTN you probably looking at um, anywhere from thirty to fifty dollars a month for um, uh, your um, phone and then thirty fifty dollars a month for your internet uh, so once um, we get uh, Garadina from Garvey Town to finish the letter and sell, send to the telecom company they're, they're going to be able to put a tower in that community area because that area you know, reception is very bad so so certain things like that is going to enhance, um, you know, Wi-Fi and phone communication. So it's a, you know, so it's that area is where the development is getting to, because uh, once you leave from Accra and you go into Cape Coast, the development is going, and then the same thing Cape Coast um, to Accra is going. So the Gomorrah district is right there in the middle. Uh, so you give it a few years, and uh, you know these things would be a lot more efficient. Uh, I've literally seen. That whole strip um, developed in the last uh, 12 years, and I remember the, the rest of the area further towards um, Cape Coast and also further towards Accra was, you know, even the roads wasn't as uh, developed. Uh, so that's what you're looking at, family, a developing nation, uh, Ghana, and these uh, developing opportunities. And also, there are estates that's already developed for those who don't want to go through the drama of doing all of this. Um, this is just giving us a chance to do different, unique, sustainable homes, you know, versus certain communities they literally just tell you this is it you just this is a brick and mortar community if you're going to build anything and then others just offer that to you in very tight lots this gives us a chance to have big lots a little bit more space and get more into nature once again the land agreement uh, binds the connection of making it clear that uh, we are legally authorized to be a part of the Garvey Town community and acquire land there and live there and be a part of the community. Our prime objectives of our Garvey Town, I'm just going to go through a few of them. And, 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 and one or two of these are on the uh, beginning of our conversation, which is the medical center. Uh, we talk about the school and our community center. Um, it's a proposal set uh, for work provided for 150 to 300 people. So with us building and the community and time going along, the goal is to create uh, more opportunities for those on the community and outside the community. So we talk about a, this a combination of different business in the uh, commercial law district. Um, so I'm going to skip through this without just even going too deep deep into uh, this as we to just go through every single article. It's a quick overview. Uh, six um, uh, business opportunities, uh, same thing we went over earlier in uh, some of the overview. Seven membership uh, rules. So when you click on the link and look at the membership rules, it's just basically saying just be righteous and just uh, look, let's look out for each other and help each other out so we can, you know, you know we can just build and grow as a community. So just look into this. Uh, keep those principles uh, strong, and um, you know, this is a good situation because. This is for those of us who are leaving from you know, from the diaspora, so we can just connect together the the other folks who may not necessarily just you know be as righteous, uh, more than like not some of the folks that are coming. So the good thing about move like this, you know, it brings out the best of our folks, and you end up getting the best of our people to connect. Self repair is the first step towards uh, reparation. Uh, this is a um, concept of. Um, Brother Garadina from Garvey Town is just talking about um, take advantage of the opportunities that we as a people have and use it for our benefit and that's our best method of reparations. All right, uh, pictures and videos. Let me go through pictures and videos uh, real quick. Now, as far as all the, the photos, um, I'm, I'm going to be building the energy on our Facebook on the, the group page. So 
for those on Facebook, just type in Garvey Town, one or two words, and then click on the um, the group page, and then just um, add yourself, and then I'll just uh, approve it. The goal is just to put all of the information in there as far as conference calls and any uh, updates. And then we do have a WhatsApp uh, page for those who have actually purchased flats. As we begin to put more people that's in that you know in the the focal point as far as this you know ready to you know, ready to move forward. Uh, but nevertheless, um, and some of the videos that we have are just repost in there. So it's an interesting page um, as far as documentation, since all of this is just uh, text. Now, as far as the uh, videos, when you're on um, a YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash Bomani 2007, and you'll see the link um, below the uh, main menu here on the website. And once you get on the um, YouTube page, um, one of the second playlists is our Garvey Town, but also you can click on playlist and you'll see a Garvey Town playlist. Um, but once you click on this link here, it opens up to where it will give you the the, the playlist for Garvey Town, and you'll see a few videos. Uh, Gary Dina video with a, him at the business conference is his introduction. Him at the land uh, doing two presentation, and the other uh, presentation is just uh, myself with a few other people, and we just basically just going through the information on the website and just giving the overview concept of our Garvey Town. Uh, Q and A. This is just a nice basic uh, Q and A for Garvey Town. Uh, by the time you read through all the information, almost all of the questions will uh, be answered. So then you just generate uh, a list of questions and we just talk. And different people are gonna have different questions, and sometimes it's never just general membership application. Now, uh, once you're ready, uh, I can always just email this to you. I have a Word document version that's typed up that you can just modify. Uh, and this is just to give you this what it looked like, which you can always print it and fill it out, but I uh, prefer just to send you the email. So anybody who doesn't have any of the emails or needs certain things, email, uh, just um, send me an email request and I'll get that to you. Buy a settlement um, agreement or shared agreement. Uh, this is um, one, of the, one of the documentation that will our name on there, our plot information, um, stemmed from Garvey Town saying, this is our connection to the land that uh, we're putting our money down on and building. And then we also get something from um, the Lands Commission. So uh, documentation is a little less uh, when you're doing this uh, communal operation, um, and which is all for the better versus everyone getting a bunch of individual paperwork. And the last thing I have on here is uh, getting started. So uh, getting started, um, again, if you're ever looking for the information on the plot size and prices, it's on getting started and the list of the different people uh, that's uh, on the project. Um, Gary Dinagamba and uh, Ruth Paha uh, is your direct connect uh, there uh, to see the property. My assistant, David, is also available if you can't get in touch with them. And then we have two builders, Kwabna and Kwesi Prempe. And then I have my... Um, Younger brother Sean and uh, cousin Yannick just helping with some administration work as I just begin to get them going so they can help with more of the stuff when we get there to Garvey Town. Uh, so uh, this is just uh, a setup to be able to just get things going and get things um, clear up from the beginning. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, conference call um, newsletter that was sent to everyone. And anyone, uh, if you're ever looking for any of the uh, newsletter, um, all you have to do is uh, look to the left side of the website and um, you'll be able to um, click on uh, the mailing list and it give you access to all of the previous um, newsletters. And in this case, one of the last newsletters is the uh, Garvey Town um, conference call. So the conference call topics uh, that we're going to get into is uh, individual building plans, a system with building plans, and volunteer for it specific projects and uh, we're going to talk more about the medical center and the school and community center and uh, as far as what we can do. All right, so I have a few people that um, was there with me in Ghana and was able to get plots of land and uh, they're going to also be here to share some information. We have Takisha and Jonathan. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to buzz in uh, Yakisha and um, she's going to she has some information as far as building plans and the techniques that uh, she's connected with 
and she's going to talk about uh, migrating culture and she's going to introduce what he does uh, for those who are not familiar with him. All right, so Yakisha, I'm going to unmute you. All right, greetings, uh, Yakisha, can you hear me? All right, greetings, uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great, how are you All right, perfect, uh, you and I was talking about the conference call and everything, um, and uh, my goal was just to do a quick overview, so hopefully everybody was able to stick with us, um, and we probably won't be going into those introductions much anymore. We'll probably just get right to the, the point. So what I wanted you to share with everyone uh, is um, just introduce them to the concept of migrating culture. Um, my brother Brandon, uh, building methods and and so on, and you can share you know, by having us navigate to the website where you talk and tell us where everything is at. All right. Um, greetings, family, neighbors. This is Jakisha. Um, Brother Brandon Rogers is currently right now, he is from Florida, but he is residing in Ghana. And uh, the name of his organization is migratingculture.org. That's his website. And some of you have, may have heard of the domes or the uh, earth bag homes. You may have heard of some of those, or you may have seen the video of Native Bowen who went to uh, a gentleman's house who had a home, a home built out of the earth bags. Now, I have uh, spoken to uh, Brendan a few times uh, regarding uh, what information we need, if uh, we can get a pricing, quotes, uh, what have you. And if, you, uh, if you're on your computer, you can go to www.migratingculture.org. And once you get to the site, the different methods will be under the section that are titled methods. And you will see the different types that they have, the uh, earth bag, uh, the monolithic dome, block building, and traditional mud building. So it's a, a lot of natural resources that uh, Brandon uh, Rogers uses along with local Ghanaians and from the research that I've done, uh, it, it looks very nice, very nice, uh, uh, very cost efficient. And from the reviews that I have seen, um, the uh, homes tend to be cool in uh, Ghana because of the, the thickness of the walls of the dome and some of the other structures that he, he built. So, it seems to be very eco-friendly and I would imagine that's what all of us are trying to do is to find something that's eco-friendly and cost efficient as well. Uh, we're moving in um, transitioning over to Ghana. Now for as uh, pricing is concerned, the only uh, structure where he has uh, general pricing information is for the monolithic domes. The other methods, you have to actually submit a survey, and that's on his website too. But I'm going to go over the pricing for the monolithic dome. So if you are on the website, you will actually have to uh, go to projects. And once you click on domes for Africa, uh, you'll see on the description, uh, it's going to start talking about the introduction of the monolithic uh, eco shell dome. And there is a hyperlink, a blue hyperlink that says click here for general pricing information. And here, family, what this does is give you a breakdown of the different pricing and the sizes um, that he has listed. So he's going to give you a brief description. I'm kind of just going to go through that. I'm not going to read all of it. You can read it at your leisure. Uh, but the first size that he has, he currently has three options available in Ghana. The first one is the tiny dome. Now, he has listed here that it's not small, it's tiny. So he's trying to uh, paint the visual the picture for you that this specific dome here is very small. So it's 10 feet round. Um, it's about 80 square feet. 
and the ceiling is about 10 feet high. And so it's good for a storage unit, a business kiosk, a uh, uh, guard house, uh, bo uh, board quarters, restrooms, granaries, uh, what have you. And the uh, starting, it starts at uh, 2500 U.S. dollars. And a deposit, there's a deposit of 1000 U.S. dollars. And uh, the construction period is about four weeks. And so uh, also the additional costs associated with setup fee and site location conditions, what have you. So anything in between uh, the information that you're reading, questions you may have, you can reach out to uh, Brother Rogers on his website. Uh, he's, he's pretty quick at responding uh, back to you. Like I said, I've communicated with him several times. Okay, the next dome size is going to be the Dome Studio 1. It's uh, 20 feet round, about 300 square feet, and the ceiling is 10 feet high. So he has listed on here that this dome, if you could think of it as a single unit. Um, so he says, imagine multiple dome units clustered together in different patterns and sizes to form spaces for housing, business, and more. Now, I have seen some pictures of clusters of these domes put together. Or you may have a three bedroom, so you may have a cluster of these homes put together, and that's starting at ten thousand U.S. dollars. The deposit is five thousand U.S. dollars. Now he has a duplex model uh, starting at fifteen thousand U.S. dollars, and uh, with a added uh, tiny dome extension of two thousand U.S. dollars. And the construction period for that is approximately three to four months with that. And also additional costs is associated with setup fee and site location and conditions. Um, and looks like the, we have about two more we have listed here. The next one is the dome studio home. So it's uh, 30 feet round, which is around 700 square feet. And the ceiling is 20 feet high this time. And so this is compared to a one-bedroom apartment. Um, again, you can also imagine this being uh, uh, clustered together to make different bedrooms or if you want to have an office setting or what have you. Think of it in that instance. Now, the dome studio home starting at twenty thousand U.S. dollars with a deposit of ten thousand U.S. dollars, and the construction period is approximately four to six months with this one. And the last final uh, dome he has listed is the big dome, which is uh, forty feet round with uh, is about twelve hundred and fifty square feet, and that's sort of kind of actually. It's the size of my apartment, which was a two-bedroom apartment with a bar and a living room. So this is actually a humongous dome right here. And uh, and he has listed here is a uh, wonderful space, can be used for two to three bedroom home or uh, as a classroom uh, workshop space. And it's starting at 30000 U.S. dollars. Uh, with a deposit of 15,000 US dollars and the uh, construction period is approximately six months. Uh, and the main requirements uh, that he show listed here is ownership of land in Ghana and of course your available uh, project funds. So this is a, a brief rundown description of what's listed on Brandon Rogers uh, website. And I have seen uh, a video clip uh, that he showed of a library he has done. And I believe I saw it on his uh, Facebook page. He has a Facebook page if you want to reach out to him. You can put in Brandon Rogers, his name, and look it up. And you may be able to see the video there. But it was a library that he created of a dome. And he also put uh, solo panels in there as well and show the children, you know, laughing and joking. So you know, it was very nice. So reach out to uh, Brother Brandon Rogers. 
he will communicate back to you via email even if you wanted to uh, become his uh, friend on Facebook send him a message he will communicate via there and he will communicate uh, now I haven't tried to call him but I know through email and Facebook Messenger he will uh, communicate and contact uh, now for as uh, obtaining a quote for whatever method or technique you would like there is a survey uh, basically he's going to ask you a lot of questions that any builder would ask you for as um, your plot size uh, he may ask you when you think you're going to move what's your budget those type of questions so uh, I've looked at the survey is very long it's a very long survey but it's, it's necessary for your project um, and that's pretty much it on Brandon Rogers um, but there is another company that's in Ghana I've been researching on this called Hive Properties H-I-V-E Properties uh, they have a Facebook page is Hive Properties LTD and it's a, a Ghanaian a couple that started this rammed earth method and I've seen Europeans they use it uh, over here in different places they're even using the dome method that Brandon Rogers so they're trying to use all of our methods in in the motherland because it is uh, eco-friendly it is efficient and it is 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 reasonable and but the round earth is an an old technique of it's it's like as the earth ages inside the earth it settles so you might have your clay you will have your soil you have your dirt you have your sand and all that settles over a period of time what the round earth method is is like they speed up the process and so again with this method here it makes it cool inside of your home and you don't have to worry about termites eating up your your uh, your, uh, your house so that's another technique that you guys can uh, uh, research on uh, find it on YouTube I found it like I said there is a company in Ghana I haven't reached out to them yet um, in regarding this technique they call high properties LTD you can find them on Facebook but they're in Ghana as well and uh, and Bomani, that's pretty much uh, all I have for uh, that as of right now, unless you want me to elaborate on something else. Uh, excellent, um, Yakisha. Uh, thank you very much. And um, uh, family, uh, we were just there in Ghana, so um, you know, we you know we were literally on the property. Uh, so right now it is 16 of us who have gotten our paperwork uh, completed and sent over to Garvey Town. I do have a few other applications here that I'm processing. Um, but we have brought a good amount of energy there to where you know, we're in the process of this getting you know, getting the land clear so some of us can start our uh, building. Most of uh, the plots between 1 to 60, those are the ones that we're working with. So for those who are looking you know, looking at the project um, and you're looking to just wait around for a little bit longer, uh, that's absolutely fine. Um, whenever you're ready to get an update of the list of plots uh, that, that are available, just you know, send me an email or call me and i get you the list and then you can select yours and send everything in and then we'll confirm it. Uh, but right now, we're in the process of just um, moving forward and um, got my uh, folks there in Ghana this consistently just doing what they can do as far as to provide as much energy um, there at, in Angarvi Town. Uh, so it's ideal for all of us right now at this moment, those of us who have plots or are looking to get plots, to just focus on your building plans and myself and my crew, we're going to fix and work out all the politics or anything that needs to be worked out because of this whole process is to be able to get you access to land to where we take the ownership of doing all of the stuff and taking care of everything and then keep you updated like on this conference call and emails and things like that. That way you don't have to be stressing up trying to call Ghana, trying to catch, reach out to Garadine and so on. 
Uh, the good thing about it, I have three people that live right there by the property. One of the problems they have always had, unfortunately, is just bad phone reception and not being very technical as far as their website and website management. So those things went down. You're looking at a good, you know, over 10 years went by, lack of progress, and these things are hard to develop. So we came up with our own way and our own approach as far as the management of it based on seeing other projects at this sale. Uh, so I'm taking care of all the administration, all of the marketing, and um, you got a bunch of other people doing different things. And all together, everything is covered. And we've had lawyers look through this and look at it. So you know, the goal is for as much of us as possible to build our home up to living condition within. Uh, so a good three to five years, uh, the goal is to just have as much or as many homes uh, built. And once we get a good momentum from there going, hopefully we can just you know, build into other districts. So the project is open for other people to come in as investors and invest on any aspect of what needs to be done there. Um, you know, when I got there, I just looked at what needed to be done, and I just dedicated myself to doing that aspect, which is what we're doing now. So, you know, the same other people just have to come along and commit to it. These projects are too big for the Garvey company alone, and you know, so they basically bit off more than they can chew, just like most of us when we're doing these projects. Uh, so, but with uh, you know, with you know, military strategy and planning and organizing, you know, this can all be done. So, this is the first. Year, full year that um, you know we've seen some good action so you know, we'll see how you know, things go along this entire year and we, we'll pace everyone we'll be at the property again in May and also in June and I'll be doing a stakeout uh, there in June um, I'll be staying back for a few days so I'll just be you know you know doing my you know inspections and everything and you know seeing what we can really you know do to make the project work because a lot of times you know, some of us have, you know, um, we know we really need help, but um, we don't want to ask help because of pride. But this situation is not about pride. This is great that the Garvey Town Company was able to acquire this amount of land for, you know, you know, which is not going to fit all of us, but it's a good start to fit at least three of us um, to build a, a unique community together. So. And, I, and then they develop a great site plan that looks very balanced. And you know, so, you know, we have to just, a lot of times, just look at what people can do and say, hey, man, let me assist and let's work together to, to take it to the next level, you know. And that's why I've had, like, several people call me and drill me with questions about doing their own tours to Africa and everything, including our good brother, Dinus, and a few other people. And I tell them, you know, they ask me anything. I tell them I got nothing to hide. And I was like, I'm hoping that, you know, whatever business or anything I can share with the next brother or sister, you know, it can get them to take things to the next level because that's what we all always have to think about, how we can take things to the next level. And this project has been sitting dormant, and we're here to resurrect it and take it to that next level. And then, you know, those who are listening that have great ideas and great background, which, you know, a lot of us are very skilled, and we put all our, our, our skills together. And together, as a community, we can develop anything. And just for us to develop a pan-African community, where it's based on the principles of being self-reliance and self-determination, which we can't really exercise here in America, but we have a chance to do that. So, you know, I'm, I'm all in on it, and I'm trust me, I've been this on the folks there to the point where they just been, you know, they've been doing a lot better, um, and you know, they're very excited, and you know, but you know, it's one of those things where you got to keep putting the fire. You know, what I'm saying that you know, you got to keep putting the fire towards these things. You know. Or everything just dies out. So um, almost every other day or so, just for the week, I'm the, you know we're on the communication and conference there, and I have so much one or two people going there to follow up and check on them, and you know I just believe in keeping people on their toes, and that's you know what we're doing. And as long as we keep doing it, it will work. And that was Fiona Garcia, no management accountability and no outside help to you know fix this, the situation. Before I continue on, I want to know if our brother Solomon, the architect, is on the line. If so, Solomon, just chime in when you can. Yakisha, let me mute you and open up for Jonathan. Greetings, Jonathan. How can are everyone you? hear me? I'm good. Can everyone hear me? Greetings. Perfect. I'm going to let them know that you the one that shot that crooked video on Garvey Town with Garadina shooting oh. a video at the back of his neck. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, but never, I take the blame. I take the blame. <laughs> but, never, but, but nevertheless, uh, I figured that you were right there by him the whole time, so you heard everything from him. Um, and based on all the things you heard from him in almost a one-hour video, uh, can you just tell people why you, know, you feel the Garvey Time Project is a, is a project that can work for us and a project that, you know, and then let, let, you know, let us know your recommendation. Uh, you, did, you did purchase a plot, so I'm sure you're in. Right. Uh, I think that is a good, a good project to invest in because it's a uh, – Brother Garadina, he's someone that's committed. Uh, he's, you know, as we can see, he's been there for over 10, 15 years. Uh, it's three, eight, 300 acres, uh, as Brother Bomani has pointed out, that's been purchased. Uh, the land is accounted for, as you can see in the emails with the legal documents. And then I think that this is just an overall good project just based off the energy that we're bringing towards the table. When you look at how uh, we have the tours going on and it seems like we'll have people coming in from every tour group that would um, buy additional plots and that energy and momentum will keep going. I really gravitate towards it because of the, the Pan-African movement that was already established in Ghana, and we've already got the, the ball rolling there. So I think this is a, a good shot at what we're doing. Um, Brother Bomani has gone through uh, the ups and downs of dealing with different projects in, in Ghana, and I, I think we should just kind of stick with this and, 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 and have our focus as a collective. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's really about what I, how I had to say. Thank you for sharing that, and thanks for your commitment yeah. to the project. Um, you know, you and I talked about uh, nation building uh, many times, and you know, I always talk about, you know, that it's best for us to use our cooperative economic energy and build a community. Like right now, we yeah. see a lot of us scramble around Ghana, and um, you know, you know, we're hearing about people saying this being broken in and that being broken in. Um, you know, all of us can live in a community like this, just like, you know, just like some of us have to live in a community like this. But, um, you know, it's a good example to show people how when you bond together, some of the simple basic issues that you have in society is not a problem. Yeah, but none of us have ever really been able to really live truly communal in a, a society where, you know, it's, you know, it's a group of folks more in a pan-African mindset and, you know, for, you know, you know, for nation building and for us truly working together. So... This really give us right. to um, you know, to do that, but at the same time, to give us a chance to really show people how we can put our resources together. Because I've been there in Ghana the last 12 years, and I've seen many people come and go, and I've seen an influx of people there. But there's no union, there's no strength to to you know to represent. Even if something happened to one of us, you know, you, you know you have lack of support. You know you can always run right. and cry to the American embassy and say that you know if something you know complain and tell them that things are going bad, especially if you tell them that, you know, um, you know Ghanaians are robbing, that, robbing you and things like that, and you want to, and you miss America, they'll, they'll put you back on a plane quick and send you there and get you scheduled to go into, um, in a, uh, you know, get you scheduled to go into a homeless shelter or something like that, which I've, you know, I've seen happen a few times. And, you know, that's not the situation we want for our folks who are trying to repatriate. If things go bad for them, at least they can come and work with us. You know, this could be something very special and really putting the energy into the project. And that's one thing I know about this project is, like, the, you know, you have to dedicate your life to it. You know, or if, people don't, if people don't see you dedicated to it, they're not going to jump too much. And, you know, so, you know, we're basically providing guidance and guidelines, and, uh, including my, my brother, uh, David, who has been bridging the gap between us and our connection there. You know, the way I look at it, you know, you have to find find a way to make it also work. It's like just like you can find a way to say, you know, I'm not going to touch this. You know, this is too much drama. But when I look at every single thing else that I've been I've I've had access to, where we as a people can connect and build a community, this is basically as good as it gets. Uh, the brother have rules and at least some good initiatives and things in place. We'll see if we can't get them even draw a site map on a piece of paper or draw write few words. You know about what the, pro what the project is. Let me just add something in there, too, uh, for the family. Like, the, the three main things that I'm, that I'm seeing and that I'm getting from this entire project, 
uh, of Garvey Town is that, you know, one, the development opportunities. Uh, you have all of these different, uh, whether it's business opportunities, whether it's an opportunity to come in and build a school, your own residential setting and layout, um, or what have you. It's the development opportunities is one thing. Uh, then you have the momentum, like I said earlier, the momentum from the Africa for the African tours. I think really that's really what's the basis of getting this thing pushed off the ground. We know we're in a time period now where we're not playing any more games and that more and more of us across the diaspora, not just in black America, want to leave and want to build something for our future. So you have that. And then we have the solidarity. The solidarity came from me being in on that tour. I left basically with the impression that everyone there was my family. You know, I don't know if it, you know, people realize that, but you know, I'm family for life with everybody from that tour. So that, that really changed the game. You know, a lot of times people, they may look at the tours like they were just a tour, but it was more than that. And so I think that that's really the difference um, with this project now and maybe, you know, past projects is that those tours served as a purpose, as a stepping stone to uh, building that actual community before there was a community there. And, and now we're, you know, we're ready to lay down the um, bricks and mortar, so to speak, or as we would say with the, uh, the uh, earth stone. But, um, yeah, you have development opportunities, the momentum, and then the solidarity. And I think that's why this project is going to succeed. I know it's going to succeed. We're going to all kind of come together, and there's going to be more and more people that are added on, or the right people that are added on to um, making this succeed. Yeah, perfect, Ajahn. You know, uh, thanks uh, for sharing. And the, you know, the good thing about it is that yourself and Yakisha was right there in the property with us. Yeah. I do have um, you know, another brother. Um, I think I was talking to him about um, uh, his name is uh, Solomon. Solomon, um, unmute yourself and uh, speak. Uh, Solomon um, is, um, and he's going to introduce himself. He's an architect that uh, we have been talking for you know, for a while, and um, he's going to be connecting with us and to get a feel of the project and seeing where he can uh, assist us. At uh, brother Solomon, um, star six to. Um, Unmute yourself. Just introduce your your, your full uh, name and this um, general introduction, and uh, this uh, share what you have to share with us tonight. Sure. Uh, my name is Solomon Acha. I am actually uh, Ghanaian, uh, 100%. I moved here to the states when I was a kid, uh, way back in '96. I've been here ever since. Uh, I got my master's in 2010 in architecture, and I recently uh, realized that. Uh, my time as a as a professional is probably better spent uh, back home in Ghana uh, than in the U.S. because America doesn't need any more architects, but I think Ghana can use a few more. Uh, that said, I wanted to quickly uh, make a comment uh, on uh, uh, Hive uh, uh, properties. Um, I've been in contact with them based on some other projects that I've been trying to do. They changed their name to Hive Earth. Um, it's all one word, H-I-V-E-E-A-R-T-H. I think they dissolved the, the previous company and they call it Hive Earth now, and they do specialize uh, in rammed earth um, buildings. And from what I know about them, I know they, they, they uh, charge for uh, pricing and all of that. I think last I checked with them, they said $400 uh, for a quote. Uh, I've had my uh, other gentleman that I've been working with. He's also an architect, licensed, I think, both here and in Ghana. Uh, his name is Sam. I'm working with him on some uh, projects to try to bring affordable housing uh, to Ghana using uh, uh, alternative construction materials. And I think he said they, they charged him or they said to charge him $300 for a quote. So I'm not really sure what it is, but uh, – uh, yes, they do specialize in rammed earth, and they're actually getting very, very good at it. Um, regarding uh, uh, Garvey Town, I've been speaking with uh, Bomani. I contacted him because I wanted uh, to get involved to see how I can help with, with the planning. Uh, in really uh, a couple different areas, um, I'm not sure if any of you are aware of all the estate projects that is going on across Ghana. You know, a lot of them, unfortunately, um, 
do not take a very innovative approach to problem solving. Now, I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the largest is called Apollonia City. And Apollonia City is literally an entire city that is being planned. They've been con uh, building it for about seven years now. And if you go to Ap Apollonia City and you buy uh, a house, what you get is basically a house where you're paying electricity uh, through ECG. That is the uh, company that provides power in Ghana. And you also uh, you also have a water uh, a, a poly tank for your water storage uh, up on your house, which is basically how everybody gets water in Ghana. Well, the issue there is if you have the chance to build an entire entirely new community or city, you would think that you can sort of solve these problems in a more novel way. For example, uh, water you can build in. Uh, a water filtration system as part of your utilities portion of your development and filter all the water that you're getting to that community through that process and then push it back out to the community uh, so that everyone in the community has clean water, clean drinking water, and they don't have to deal with the other problem that, you know, the majority of this uh, country have to deal with. Uh, also, you can build large uh, water reservoirs uh, that the entire community can share as opposed to, you know, sort of putting a tank on every uh, home. Regarding energy, my older brother is an electrical engineer, and I've been speaking with him regarding uh, solar power, and we're working on other strategies to help make solar power more affordable in Ghana. Now, with solar energy, the more expensive portion of it is like the storage, the batteries that you need to store the power. Well, if you have a community, and that community has a built-in infrastructure uh, where all the cost for the battery is housed in one place that the community can share, all of a sudden all of the people in the house have to, uh, in the community have to pay for is just the panel and the basic systems, which is probably around 5000 or so, uh, instead of the 25000 that they would have to pay uh, for a full uh, functioning system to bring your house to net zero. So those are just some basic ideas uh, regarding sort of novel solutions to uh, developing communities to really be sustainable uh, and self-sufficient. Uh, of course, as an architect, I can provide uh, uh, custom home designs. Of course, I think Yakisha contacted me recently to discuss uh, some possibilities, and um, I am also into rammed earth. Uh, I'm well aware of earth bag homes. I've never used them before, but I personally like to push rammed earth because the look is a lot uh, cleaner. Um, and with most people, I think selling them uh, sort of modern-looking homes is a bit more ideal. Uh, a lot, the reason why most people don't like uh, alternative construction methods is because they tend to uh, look a bit crude to some people. Uh, but it, it's a matter of taste. Uh, I think the point is that, you know, whatever uh, you want, I, I can deliver. My personal um, interest is in delivering uh, designs that are unique and ideally based off of African materials and, and design uh, language and so on and so forth. So uh, I think Bomani can share my contact with you if anyone uh, is interested in reaching out to me. And I think that's about it, Bomani. Unless there's anything else you would like me to touch on, please. I uh, appreciate uh, um, Solomon. If you can just, um, you know, you can just still just um, give your um if you don't mind, if you give your number and um, email address or email address um, depends on your level of oh, comfort. Sure. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, my, call. my phone number is uh, 612-388-1494. I am in uh, Minnesota. Um, I work in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, my email address is k-i-n-g-s-o-l-1849 at gmail.com. That's Kane, S O L, 1849 at gmail.com. Perfect. And Sam, yes, uh, Solomon Atta, um, architect that will be working with us. So thank you for your time. Um, let me just go um, ahead and meet you. And let me um, to see if I can just um, find one person. Uh, Brother Rakin, uh, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, yes, Brother, uh, how's everything? I appreciate you coming to Ghana with us, um, not only in May, but also in November. And then as soon as you came with us in November, 
we connected and uh, you know and um, got you a plot uh, there in Garvey Town. And um, you know, so you know, I want to know if you're going to share with people a, a few things of you know of how you came to this conclusion that you know you want to get some land and you want to you know build into this build in this community based on going to Ghana twice. Well, you know, I've always wanted to go to Africa because I've always studied on Garvey. And it kind of surprised me when I found out that Garvey never set foot in Africa. And so it, 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 it kind of bewildered me when I first uh, realized that. So I said, well, I got to go now. You know, I can't keep waiting around year after year saying I'm going to go. And uh, when I kind of made up my mind that I was going to go, I started looking. And the first videos when I when I went online was Bo Money. And just the energy and you know, got my attention. Then I started looking for a body of work. And nobody works harder to than Bo Money when it comes to this social media. So um I was binge binging on a lot of the videos. And when I called him, I was almost sure, certainly I couldn't make the, the May trip due to the fact that I only had maybe, I think, four four or five weeks before the trip was getting ready to they was getting ready to go on the trip. But when I called him, he's like, yeah, I got one spot left. So I made it happen. And as far as buying land, I figured it would probably be reasonable, but I had no idea on how um, – I would get anything like that done. It crossed my mind that if I if I did go to Africa, I would want to, you know, get land and become. I don't know why I want to be a farmer, but I figured I like to eat, so I need to be able to grow my own food. And here they they're busy poisoning us through the food and water, so it only makes sense to, you know, have aspirations to become a farmer. Um, you want to be able to eat clean. You want to be able to drink clean water, and you want to be able to raise healthy children. Because if you can't raise healthy children, then how are you going to have a, a pan-African movement when all your people are sick and dying? So I want to be able to um, do something, you know, do something about that. So buying there makes sense because I mean I'm, I'm buying things here in the states, but you're basically confined to the black community and um, if you try to move outside of that, you know the prices are hella ridiculous. I mean, we're talking two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars for properties that, if you come to my neighborhood, is worth fifty thousand. So the, the the prices are super inflated. So when you look and uh, compare the prices, what you can get something done in Ghana, it just makes sense. I mean, I, I figure I got maybe fifteen more years to work. So. You know, I don't want to retire here. I want to retire there. But in the meantime, you know, we got a lot of work ahead of us. So um, I'm making preparations to have an extra, extra money. You know, I'm starting new businesses to have extra income just so I can use for this project and a few other projects there. Uh, and maybe I could just start kind of retiring early, kind of like fate, like a phase retirement, like over the next five years, make a big push. And then after that, start kind of, breaking my hours down, because I probably do about 70 hours a week now, I could probably start breaking it down to 50, then 40, then 30, and then maybe do eight months here and then four months over there until, until I'm ready to, you know, start working for these devils and, and get off the plantation. Well, perfect, man. And uh, the good thing about it is you're right on the same block where I'm at and everything, so, you know, we, we got you. But uh, yeah, uh, thanks, uh, brother uh, Rakin. Um, you know, because we're gonna definitely um, you know, have people who are gonna be, you know, working the access of the, the resources in America. And I'm always telling our folks that you, you're on the plantation working them. I was like that. You know, let's make sure we we put some of it you know, off uh, for nation building. So you know, right there in Garvey Town, we'll be there to you know assist people with their investments. What I want to do, family, before we uh, close the call or before we open up for some uh, questions, since we haven't opened up for questions, let me see if one of my uh, good brothers uh, is here on the line. Uh, greetings, our brother William uh, Bomani here. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, I hear you. Uh, greetings. Uh, 
Yeah, I want to make sure that uh, you know you're okay to talk on a live call. Um, I got you uh, muted and you're, you're live. Um, I want to appreciate you from from joining the call and everything. Is you know I'm trying to share with people some of the people that are part of our community, which is you know, a good amount of people from the last year of our journeys. You, know, you heard us talking about security and everything, man. Now, you, you're a, you're a man with some some great background and some some great skills, and we definitely. We'll we'll love to have uh, you know your energy in the property. Oh yeah, I I basically spent most of my life uh, doing security, either working at, in the management or uh, you know in the military. I was in the military. I spent all that majority of thirty years doing that and running my own company. So the the, the thing that is basically you you know it's just like anything you have you have to assess you know all of uh, your environment, what's around you. You know you you look to see the you know you got and I see you got a good a good bunch of uh, ex military guys that will be part of the community. That's an asset because you know when you when you're going into any uh, foreign uh, country, you got to basically you know you know you know the environment, you know what you what you're dealing with because you guys have traveled there like at least what, what about twelve times, and that's 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 interesting because you know once once you have that that uh, experience, you can't beat that. You know knowing like I I saw I, I think I was um, online I saw that one guy native born said he was a victim of some type of robbery. And a lot of times, you know what, a lot of people just, um, I think having a community is an asset because, you know what, you, you're able to watch each other's backs. You're able to, you know, so if you, you know, like I do business and I travel quite frequently. So if you leave you leave your home and you have people, like I, I can remember, I was talking to my wife years ago. I remember when, you know, li living in a community for about, I think I was a teenager, but you, you could leave your door open. And the reason you could do that was, was because at that time, Everybody in the community knew each other. You know, it was, it was a predominantly black community that I lived in, but everybody pretty much looked out. You know, we didn't have any problem with, you know, kids playing late, staying up late because everybody looked out for one another. But you know what? I guess, I guess years and years of constant um, different people, I think this is what they do in the Matrix. They're always con constantly getting, um, I say, reinforcements. Like they bring in all these different people in, and that is to basically weaken our base, which which is within our community. We had the businesses on lock. We had pretty much everything. We had our whole communities on lock. But you know what? I think when when you have a community and you have good people in that community, that's your strength. Is everybody 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 knows everybody? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I just appreciate it. the things that you and I have uh, talked about over the period of time, and and then uh, then. You know, you can you can you know definitely be a for great assistance, uh, especially help our, our brother uh, Jonathan, um, since you're you know, you're a lot more uh, skilled and experienced. Uh, and then some of the other uh, folks that are coming, I got my younger brother and, and cousins they're coming, and you know, definitely looking forward to someone like yourself, you know, just sharing some of the wealth of uh, skills and knowledge. Um, and you know, the goal, you know, as I talked about earlier in the conversation about our two elders um, that. They were murdered uh, outside the property right. of Yanka, which is a shame to us, you know. You know, and we can't defend our. So. Well, you know, well, you know that, that those are things of opportunity. Like, let me tell you something. Well, my my uh, assessment of that situation is like, look, people people look for your weaknesses, they look for your strengths, and when you when people see that there is no men in the community, you know, not that a lot of our sisters are not, you know, some of them are capable, but the thing is, when you see a community full of, uh, you know. People that maybe say you got like like a lot of elderly people. You got you don't have any. You need your young soldiers. That's why I always you know I, I try to keep my sons around with me and I train them. And you know what? I train them in martial arts. I train them. You know they all know how to use firearms. You know these are things that I taught them. They didn't learn it from anybody. I learned I learned how to use firearms from my, from my father before I went in the military. And, this, and my father always had that. He had that mindset, you know. My my father was a guy that was uh, no nonsense. He he was, you know, he come up in the streets, and you know, everything I learned about manhood, I learned from him. And you know, he always he always teach protect your family, protect your neighbors. You know, these these are the things that I I came up in. All all the guys that I come up with, we we were soldiers. We didn't have. You know, like a lot of times you see these young guys today, they're videotaping when they see, you know, a lot of elders being assaulted. You know, a lot, a lot of people, they, you know, we had, we came up with a different mentality. And our mentality was zero tolerance. If you come around our community doing that, you, you're going to pay. You're going to pay dearly. And that's, that's just how it was. But, I mean, the generation is changing. But I think we had to go back to the old ways. We had to go back to the old ways of looking out for the elderly, looking out for the women, protecting, you know, the, 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 the most vulnerable, our children, you know, those things. That, that's our... Um, that's our commodities. That's our future. So when you when you don't protect that, 
you 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 really nothing as a, as an individual. I think as a man, you you really nothing if you don't if you don't know how to do those things. And that's what my father always taught me. You know, he said, if, you, if you're a man, you got you got to know how to take care of business. And you know, those things are essential. And once you have that on lock in your community, pe- people word gets around. People 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 know. Like I know, I used to uh, I, I used to do travel and business, and I mean I knew a lot of met a lot of guys, and a lot of these guys, their communities. You you can't come in and you like r- the Russian guys, you can't infiltrate the community. The Italians, you can't come in there with that because there's zero tolerance with that, and they don't play with you. And, uh, you know, one one thing is I, I've learned by, you know, being amongst those people in business, is that that's how you got to do it. You, you have to basically have your community, you know you know who's uh, coming in, you know who's going out, you have control access, and once you do that, you're not going to have anything. Like you see those people that were, those sisters that were murdered, they didn't, they didn't follow rules of engagement, and they didn't have you know there was they didn't have protection. You know, had had they had certain uh, you know things in place, that would have never took place. It would have never happened. Absolutely, brother William, and appreciate you very much, man. You're always a great wealth on military intelligence, uh, security, and surveillance. Um, and right. you know, and I'm I'm working on making sure uh, Gary didn't finish these uh, paperwork so we can get you on board and everything. So right. um, you know, uh, as we need you know, more so warriors like yourself uh, that okay. way, because uh, you know, I'm telling our elders that you know, because people hear about that situation in Fianca and they make us oh, yeah. look weak, you know, when we can't do. You know, so I tell them that you know we already been working on that, and you know, I got my brother Jonathan, yourself, and a few right. others. You know, we're going to make sure that we make sure everything is all good. Um, of course, of course, because because you know what, when you come in with your with your elders, they want to leave and they want to have they want to be able to be in peace. They want to be able to you know, they want to go to sleep at night. You know what? And for me, you know, everything I've done, I've I've done it for other people. You know, they they weren't my people, but I you know I was paid you know I was paid well to do you know do a job. But the, the basic thing is. It never happened in none of these communities where I work because you know we we basically we had a zero tolerance thing and you know what that's the thing, that's the only thing you have to do you have to let people know that you're out there and you know what you 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 you're watching over your people you're watching over your community and you're not going to have that you know that that's that's something that only happens when you like you 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 leave a a breach you leave something open then then your uh, who, whoever the people are is watching you when they see that they're going they're going to exploit that but once you don't leave, once you don't leave that and once you you know you you pretty much keep your keep your community and you have people around you that have the same attitude you're not going to have that that's that's only going to happen when you um, you know you you leave those things uh unchecked once you once you once you keep them pretty much you ha- you have a security detail you have people that's with you that have that uh, background and then you know they pretty much are conscious of certain things and they know what to watch out for it's like okay i i, I live in all major cities like new york and you know these areas and when you when you're in these areas man you it's nothing that you really you know you haven't seen when you when you go to ghana you have to learn you know what the local environment is about once you you know you learn like I've, I've i've done a lot of research on it and i heard that they have a lot of um like a lot of petty crime I, and i do do a lot of research on it i read their newspaper almost every day and i see that they do have some political things going on but you know what when you uh have your community that's another good thing about having a community is that you know you you pretty much interact with people around you but at the same time that gives you a, a, a tactical advantage because you know who lives uh you know your people are amongst you and you know what y'all are able to look out for one another so that's an asset that's an asset you know as to going in a as being a stranger Going and living amongst other people, you you're gonna have to you know meet and make friends because you know what those are the, your neighbors, those are the ones gonna look out for you when you leave, and you know those those are the things that's most important is that you you move in and you have uh, brothers and sisters from the diaspora that you can look out for one another. Absolutely, brother, and I appreciate you you sharing everything, and we're definitely um gonna connect and talk some more. I'm gonna mute you and then open things up for questions as we begin to uh, close on the uh, conference call. All right, so our family, um, uh, for those who have any questions on anything that we've talked about, uh, press star six to unmute yourself. Give us your name, where you're calling from, and your question. Hello, Bomani, can you hear me? This is Kim from California. Uh, Greetings, Kim. I can hear you loud and clear. Hello. Um, My question is, I requested a specific plot and my receipt shows a different plot number, and that plot number is already assigned to someone else. So maybe you need to review my paperwork and get back with me this week on 
in yeah, fact, which is why I purchased. Yes, yeah, a simple thing came out. What you do is just click on a reply back to the email, and this is what I've been trying to get more people to do. Just click on a reply back and say, hey, this don't look right, and then you get a quick reply back with a six. Okay, and my next question is, if people are not um, able to build within five years or three years, whatever the limit is, what will happen to them? Uh, what are the um, repercussions? Can, if you're open to someone else taking that plot and you get another plot, we can just move you towards uh, another part of the development. Oh. So that's for people who are not able to build within the time frame? Yes, exactly. Absolutely. I could. And the reason I'm asking the question about um, mm -hmm. if people are not, I'm ready to build today, um, but I'm just wondering what's going to happen to the individuals that purchase a plot and what if they can't purchase, I mean, what if they can't purchase a um a home within the time span. What's going to happen to them in their plot? Yeah, and that's what I was saying too. Um, we can, uh, we just have to. It's all about communication. So all we're doing is just uh, communicating. If someone say, "Hey, um, well, you know, I'm open to moving over here, uh, and I can build a few years later," and then if someone okay. say, "Hey, I can build right here, um, right now." All right, so I got your receipt changeover uh, for 35, uh, which you noted on there. So thanks for the heads up on that. Um, but if you want to actually get something closer than 35. Um, no, I'm good with 35. It's fine right. with me. All right. So the goal right now is from 1 to 60. Um, mm -hmm. And definitely the first set um, is to get as many people filled up as possible to build it. You may never get um, just like 20 people all together building at one time in the block. You may have 10 people, 10 people. And I think that's not bad because at least, you know, you have some level of energy because, as you can see, everything is being built from the ground up. Um, so right. since you're ready, um, do you have any building plans or anything you want to share? Oh, I'm looking at several um, container-type homes. I like the container homes. That's perfect. But listening to listening to the architect, now I'm going to um, investigate the uh, type of homes he was speaking about, the rammed earth. I like those as well. Yeah, perfect. Um, and um, also, I do have an email I'm going to share with you. It is um, it is just a list of 50 different uh, container homes. Um, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if I sent in an email that you may have gotten, but uh, you know, it gives you a nice sort of floor plan and things like that. So, um, you know, it's just always good to, you know, even if you look at a few different floor plans and process it, since we have a little bit of time, and that's the main thing I'm looking to get a lot of people to do, is to look at, you know, the different methods. Uh, that, that way, um, you know, you know, maybe in a few months from now when everything is all set and ready, um, we can just uh, get some estimates. Okay, so what is the time frame that we're looking at when we will be able to start building? Uh, yes, and I just confirmed that with uh, Garadina. Uh, you're looking at uh, 90 days and everything is all finished and clear. So as far as yourself, we can just look at it at the uh, beginning of this month, um, I mean next month. So for yourself around July. And I'll be there okay. in, in June, so I'll be putting the pressure on folks to step it up. So. Um, you know, once you get uh, to the point where you have a few building plans, you can share it with me, and I'll, you know, if you have an architect already, or if you have someone that's a builder already, then you know, let us know. But the goal is for me to find someone that's gonna, you know, you know, take care of your building and get it done as you need it, and we just basically manage it to make sure that everything is being done as the way you need it. Okay, and my last question is: His name is Garadina. Garadina. When is he gonna? When is he going to provide, he's an architect as well, when is he going to provide the types of um, houses that, he, that he's able to build? All right, cool. So we did have a meeting earlier today and I had a list of uh, 16 things, and that was one of them that, um, you know, since uh, people have seen the video with him saying that they built certain things, um, right. you know, people need to see the floor plans and need to get some prices and things like that. So I'm trying to encourage everyone uh, to put these documentation together because 
the people that have interest, that's what they want to see, uh, like yourself. So all of these things are like in consistent conversation and I understand that, you know, they can only do a few things at a time, but, you know, trying to get people, you know, but, you know, we still have to stay on top of it. So I would say in the next few months um, we should get a, we should have a more in place uh, to, you know, be able to do that because uh, I also did the same request with several other people. Uh, Yakisha did talk about the floor plans and the prices. So, as you can see, the, um, the Brandon Rogers migrating the culture does have at least some information as far as that. Uh, so we just have to just keep on encouraging others to do it. Um, the style of how things are done in Ghana is just a lot different from you and I in the states are used to. Uh, you know, sometimes money is exchanged and people just do a verbal agreement that they're going to do something and. That doesn't work for any of us. Oh, I know. That, that I doesn't know. work for any of us on, our, on this call because that's how you get drama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well aware with how things are done in Ghana. Okay, that was my final question. Thank you very much. Thank you for all you're doing for us. I appreciate you, Kim. So I'll, uh, I'll correct that, and then I'll send you an update on that. And then you and I will also connect um, this week on your building plans. Okay. All righty. Thank you. All right, perfect. All right, so family, uh, the line is open for questions uh, and also for questions for any of the other people that spoke earlier. Hey, Bomani, this is John from Atlanta. Can you hear me? Uh, greetings, John. Good to hear from you. Uh, how you been? I'm good, bro. How about yourself? All right, man. Uh, putting this thing in place, man, to make it as sweet as possible. It's sounding good. It's sounding good. I'm trying to get some folks on board with me as well. Uh, yes, My question is, can you provide us a listing of builders, just the websites and their links in one email so we can just look through them all? Uh, brother, I, I swear I wish I, I wish I could hit that magic button to get it, but that's, um, I'm trying my best to get every single people in our, our, you know, our, our spectrum to even put together a thing, but it's, it, 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 it should be simple. And um, so I'm just basically telling people, just give me some time. Um, I keep, if I keep on pressuring certain people, uh, they will come up with certain things. But as I was saying earlier, things are done a little bit different. So um, I will look at some other uh, folks other than, you know, as you can see, Brandon, his website has some prices and things. But it's going to take me a little bit. So I will say, you know, give me a good month. Um, I should have something nice together where it's just one email like, you know, like other emails. And... You can just look at it. So okay. I'll work on it and keep you and everybody else posted. Yeah, second question is, will there be any specs requirements on the building or structure throughout the community, or is it a free-for-all based on what you want to have built? Yeah, based on, it's, it's, a free, it's a free environment to build. What we're doing is uh, encouraging as much sustainability um, as possible. Um, and that's also including with us is encouraging people to plant as much flowers and plants and as as much as possible. Can you you can just imagine the type of environment that you live in if you just have that you know this nice and fresh air versus your New York City sewer air. <laughs> yeah, the young lady that just spoke with the uh, container idea, if she could provide that and share that with us, that would be great as well. Oh yes, I have some um, some some floor plans. I'll get those uh, out. But um, yeah, so yeah, so yeah, again, we go. I, I, you know, we do have a few things. Uh, so I'll, 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 you know, to make it simple, you know, like I said, I'll uh, piece it together in one email. So um, I'll be on it. And then for those okay. who have uh, some any you know, any good suggestions, you know, you can always uh, send me an, you know, send me an email. Um, with you know, if you know, especially if you find some real good websites. I give some estimates, you know, especially if they're based in Ghana, because we don't know everything and everyone. So, um, this action for everyone else to also think about some of these things to assist, um, and we just work it out because that's what this uh, project is. It's uh, more, you know, for us to work it out ourselves and things, and we don't have the the the, the, the white folks in the code violation place ready to tag us every minute. You know, there are codes in, in the country, but um, we won't be violating them based on what we, we're building. Hi, Bobani. This is Judy. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, greetings. Um, 
How's everything going? Greetings. A um, couple of questions. The, the lot, the residential lot, there are, what, 70 by 100? Is that so? I mean, they're 100 by 170. 100 by, by, 100 by 100. Right. Um, How many bedrooms? I mean, are we allowed to build? Um, like I heard the gentleman, you, you told him it's free for all. So uh, split story, two stories, we, we, or just single stories? You can build two stories. Um, you can build duplex, two stories. triplex, oh. all other stuff. Okay. Okay, so okay, so that makes a difference because I was just wondering with with the with the plot size, how many bedrooms will that um, will one be able to build? But being that you can, you know, one can build two stories, then I then that answer the question. Now, as far as the builder, do each person have to um, have their own preference builder, or will the the, the association the association the community? Will you be providing builders, or how, how does that work? I mean, if you have your own builder, your own architect, your own crew, you can uh, make your own move, which is ideal. Assembly people that you know we know that we can trust, that we can work with to make sure that you know they do folks right. So that's what we're trying to do at this very moment as we're speaking. Um, but you, you know, oh. people have that option. You know, we're not. The um, goal is not to limit people in their thinking of what they're trying to do. Mhm. Mm okay. And and can you just go over the time frame? How much time frame we have to to build? I know the young lady said she she can start building right away, or whatever. How much time, you know, out do we have? Like as far as maybe a year, two years, three years? Yes, uh, it's it's a uh, five years um, completed house. Okay. So I would need it to oh. recommend and, and you know, so recommend people do their best and you know, people can always switch it to someone else and move further down. Okay. All righty. Well, that's all the question I have. Thank you. Oh, excellent. You're welcome. Hello. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm from Virginia. How you doing, Moani? Uh, green, Chris. I'm doing all right, but so... Uh, nothing much. So I wanted to piggyback on the lady that was just speaking. Um, in regards to like um, the buildings and stuff. Um, so as far as like, I was wondering, did you all want to approach this from like a community standpoint? As far as like, like what if we had, um, I don't know, two or three builders that we all agreed on, or you know, we had a consensus on because. When you think about uh, a community, especially something like this, which on paper looks very attractive, but um, you know, someone someone has a big old house, and you got someone with a container house, and then you got someone with the, you know, you know what I'm saying? You got all these different style houses, and you know, I, I would think that we would want this property to definitely look attractive, especially if you're talking about timeshares and you know, people coming to new community. And over here, um, I have, I live in a, H uh, a non-HOA, so I definitely have neighbors. You know, I have, a, I have a style house. My neighbor has a style house. They got stuff in the yard. And, you know, um, and then my other neighbor, you know, they have, like, a smaller house. So, it, and just like over here, it, you know, kind of drives the value of the whole community. You know, it can drive the whole community, you know, down when as far as people coming in and, you know, looking at the property and the community. So I guess my question is, is that something that everybody will want to consider? Like, okay, let's narrow this down to like three three different builders and, and you know, three style or four style houses that kind of match each other, but, you know, have different, you know, preferences for people, maybe two story, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, 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 I heard you loud and clear. Thank you for, um, for sharing. Let me see if anyone else, Jonathan, Yakisha, anyone that spoke before, if you want to answer our, our brother, our Chris, our question. Hey, um, well, morning. This is John again from Atlanta. I just messaged you that same question that we should have one to three builders for the design to keep the consistency because I live in an HOA community, and I can tell you it definitely controls the value of your home. I bought my house three years ago at 360. I'm at 350 now. In in a matter of three years, 
I'm at four fifty now, excuse me. So that yeah. tells you the value that it gets on your home. Yeah, definitely. Some people are going to be turned off by this project because it's not one of those set design. Um, most I can do is send the brother um, Garadina Gamba a message, um, send him and David a message, and just you know. So I'll look at the suggestion and pass it along. That's the best I can do. But um, uh, based on all of our conversations, you know, that was never something that they were pushing. But nevertheless, um, uh, I will definitely get back, put you on that. And that may not be as simple as far as three and four style homes. It may to be a little bit more than that. Uh, Jonathan, uh, go ahead. Yes, I, I guess I'll just chime in on uh, what was just suggested. Uh, typically, if you're in a situation where you have uh, different styles of builders and different homes, one thing we could do, if that's, if that's the case where we know that it's going to drive the property values possibly down, we could put in place development standards. So you could have a certain area of our 300-acre uh, site where you have these builders over here and then the other builders over there. So it could be a cons sort of some type of a consistency. And as the brother said, it won't like, look less attractive. So that, that's a possible option if we're going to do that. But we definitely want to keep it organic and open for whatever, you know, anybody wants to build. Because that's, that's the point is that we're coming into this new community and we want to be free to be able to do and build what we, whatever we want to do. So, I mean, that's something that we could put in place is having different development standards if that's the case. Hello, this is Solomon. Yeah, yes. I'd like to make a quick point. Sure, go ahead. Um, you know, uh, what I would like to say is, you know, I, I think the builders are important. It's also the design and, and the work of the architect. Uh, what I might suggest is that Maybe uh, what you could do is put in place just a, you know, uh, a community of, I don't know, a few architects and designers and builders who review people's designs and plans and just advise them on maybe how well it fits in the community or the property and things like that. I think uh, the problem with standards is that, you know, they can turn certain people off. Um, so you can just, you know, provide some advisory on people's design and then also, you know, just because the design is organic doesn't mean that the neighborhood has to, uh, doesn't mean that it's going to drive the property uh, down. You know, a lot boils down to just a street cross section, right? You have your road, you have your sidewalk, and then you have your, you know, fence or wall or whatever. You know, how is that designed? And I think that one actually falls more on the people uh, planning the city. And if they can sort of make that portion of the development look look nice, uh, what the how does it actually look like may have less of an impact uh, on the community. So that's another option. I definitely will uh, appreciate everybody's uh, input. So what I'll do is um, I'll get it over and let everybody know what uh, is the feedback from the folks who actually is in control of the project as far as the building and things like that. Uh, so. All right, so let's uh, switch here and hopefully uh, someone else have a different uh, question. Uh, then uh, we'll close as um, it's getting uh, late. Hey, Bomani, it's Matrell. Can you hear me? Uh, greetings, uh, Matrell. How are you? I'm good. I was just wondering about the water. Um, is, it, is the property set up um, on the type of land where well water would be an option? Uh, yes, uh, you can put in your borehole. You can put a borehole in a well water system. So absolutely, and you're in a good location. Thank you. And then you can uh, you can also do catch water methods, you know. So you have some flexible option, and then there's also regular water and electricity. And then one more question. And if we do our own like solar grid or our own panels for our own piece of property, can we tap into the larger solar energy or is it just all community energy and then we would have one or two or not even one or two, maybe four panels allocated to our each house? The ideal thing is to really build a community grid as far as uh, power uh, with a combination of you know, wind and solar. But at this very moment, uh, individuals have to get their own. Mm -hmm. And then you know, once, um, once we get things going, uh, we can work on plans to combine the resources. 
you know, so a lot of things are not uh, you know figured out, but um, it's set for where people can do their individual project, but the goal is to do it more communal. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, perfect. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, and uh, well, with regard to the um, first of all, how are you doing today, brother? Uh, uh, with regard to the, regard to the uh, um, to the building standards and all, and I understand where some people are coming from with it, but you know we have to remember that we're out here to do something different, and that means using our own imagination, our own creativity, not to be locked into this box that's been painted for us by by you know <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Uh, this is our this is our time to express ourselves. And, and make it be a community that it, that will be an example for any other community. If we lock ourselves into standards, and don't get me wrong, there are certain standards that you have to follow because you can't um, 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 disobey the laws of physics and all that. But most importantly, we need to make sure that we have our own aesthetic, our own personal aesthetic there, because that's what we're bringing to the place. That's the lifeblood of it all. Uh, yes, I mean definitely. I mean, I'm trying to take in everybody's uh, feedback, and I'll pass yeah. it to the, you know, the the folks that's um, that's in charge of the project development. Right, and I I included a couple of links. One was a cob house, which is not the whole bag house thing, but there might be something we can pull from that in terms of information to help us out with what we're doing. Uh, the other things uh, were uh, two architecture books. I haven't got a chance to read them myself. I just became aware of them the other night. They're very long. Right. But it might be worth our while to take a look at some of that. Um, if we do the proper planning, we can actually uh, uh, extrapolate different things from what we're reading and create something that's fresh. It's all about the freshness. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, it's, um, it's 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 a flexible project, so you know, but you know, based on people' questions, I will give them some feedback on it, but. Uh, um, you know, some people are not going to want to proceed because they're going to be they're going to look at the situation as that that someone else's project. But this is not about how great a value of a home we're you know we're going to get and build. It's about sustainable community. So exactly. Most important thing you know what I shared in you know, previous uh, videos and things is for people to. To focus on less expensive building and build more in a you know the direct range of between thirty to fifty thousand dollars you know <coughs> and uh, build as sustainable as possible but uh, the goal is to make you know place like more of a tropical paradise um, and you know with a certain unique feel to it uh, so you know we'll see how it goes and you know once again I understand some people are not going to agree with certain things. And not going to agree with certain flexibility, but um, at the end of the day, um, you know, you know, we have, you know, we're just doing our best. with trying to put a small group of us together. There are many other projects out there that give you more of an access to where you know, it's more organized building and things like that, and you know, and things like that. But you know, but yeah, but that's why you know, I try to just put out as much information as possible so we can just take a look at what you know we got going on here and then compare it to something else. And then you know, see if it may work. But um, you know, we do our best. But uh, in, in general, uh, family, let me um close uh, some of these open lines and open up for final questions as we uh, close. And then we can just uh, communicate back in about exactly a month or four weeks. All right. So once again, family, um, for those who are interested and have not looked at any information, please check out the full details on our website, africaforthafricans.org, and click on the Garvey Town link and read through the details, and that will give, get you up to speed on what's going on, and we'll keep everybody uh, posted, and uh, we'll be there in Ghana in less than two months, so whatever documentation that we can put together is what we'll share with you and keep sharing. Uh, so anyone that's interested and ready to join a project, uh, you can call me or, or email me, and I'll send you the getting started email, and you can fill out all the paperwork and send it in. And when things are clear, you send in the cash, and we get things uh, started on your uh, project for Garvey Town. So once again, family, this is Bomani Taimba. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank everybody for the time joining the call, and and everybody sharing the input, and we'll keep everybody posted. Take care. Good night.